Having a responsive website that looks and works properly on mobile devices is incredibly important. For a website to be responsive, the size and position of site elements respond to the so-called viewport. This is the area a site is visible in, and it's constrained by both the size of the device and the size of the browser window used by the device. The goal of responsive design is to make accessing sites as comfortable as possible for visitors without the need for zooming, scrolling, resizing, and all of that. Using media queries for mobile can help you achieve a responsive design. At the heart of responsive design is CSS. CSS is so central because it determines objects' sizes. However, there's something even more important for making websites look good on mobile, CSS media queries. A media query is a rule you write into your CSS that adds conditions to your styling. So for example, you can tell a browser to apply a color to an element, but only at a certain screen resolution, orientation, or size. Another popular way to use a media query is to move the sidebar below the main content section. This is a common maneuver in responsive web design, which saves screen real estate on smaller devices. Rather than move content around, you might just want to hide it completely. In that case, you could use this code in order to disable it. Let's look at some examples of media queries for tablets. Just like with smartphones, there are a wide variety of tablet screen sizes. Generally, you can use this CSS media query for tablets. Pseudo elements apply specific styles to different portions of an HTML element. You can use them in your media queries to change the design of your buttons. Here's how you can use them to apply different layouts to a login button depending on screen size. Many people consider iPads to be tablets. However, since they are technically not categorized that way by Apple, we'll talk about them separately. One of the benefits of using media queries to target iPads is that you can use the same one for nearly every iPad generation, from iPad 1 to iPad mini. To create a responsive design that translates well on these devices, you can use this CSS. This can also be used for both landscape and portrait orientations. If you want to target iPad Pros, you might want to consider adjusting the max device width to 1,366 pixels. As you can see, trying to set responsive media queries for all devices gets confusing fast especially if you're in the habit of defining media query CSS min and max. We haven't even touched on all the various screen sizes for desktop and laptop computers. That's why it's important to define your breakpoints according to your design. Rather than setting the breakpoints for specific gadgets and devices and screen sizes, it's more prudent to look at where they're actually necessary on your website. The best approach is to always start with mobile. Take your design and shrink your screen to the smallest possible size. If you don't have any media queries in place, it will probably look pretty horrible. So for example, here's an example of our website after we turned some of the media queries off. You may not have to change the entire layout, but rather just an element or two. You can use the Chrome or Firefox developer tools to help you create different viewport sizes, including ones bigger than the screen that you're currently using. Slowly expand the screen and watch the layout behavior. When you get to a point where it doesn't look good anymore or where certain content is not visible or certain content looks broken, you found a breakpoint. Input that change into your style sheet and then proceed in the same way until you reach the full screen. This might seem a little bit tedious, but trust me, it makes for a much better end result. Setting media queries for mobile can be a little tricky, especially if this is your first attempt. If your media queries aren't taking effect, the first thing to do is check and make sure that they're in the right place. They need to be at the end of the style sheet in order to overwrite earlier declarations. When they are not in the right order, for example, queries for smaller screens before those for larger screens, this can cause problems. If everything is in order, but your styles are still not overwritten, make sure you use the same CSS selectors in your media query that you're trying to override. If the earlier ones are more specific, they can keep overriding the new selector. 
Another possibility is that you have CSS declared inline, meaning directly inside an HTML document as opposed to the style sheet. If that's the case, see if you can remove the inline CSS altogether or force an overwrite with exclamation point important. Maybe you notice that although your queries work on mobile devices, they don't work on a desktop computer with a reduced browser window size. If that's the case, you might have to set a device specific media query. It's important to note that max device width and max width are not the same. For the first media query, the screen size, not the viewport size is the decisive factor. So let's say that the max device width is defined as 480 pixels. This means that the design will not change in a desktop browser because the desktop device has a larger screen, even if its viewpoint is 480 pixels. However, it will change on an iPhone. Use max width to fix this. Using max width is sufficient in most cases. Perhaps you're dealing with the reverse scenario. Your queries are working in a browser, but not on mobile. If this is the case, you might have forgotten to set the viewport and default zoom. For this problem, add this line to your header. This will tell the browser to render pages according to the device width. Adding it often does the trick for making mobile breakpoints work. If this video solved your problem, please let us know by leaving a comment, liking this video, and subscribing to this channel. And look out for new WordPress tutorial videos every single Tuesday.